Hey you guys, Matt Allen, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bass and today we're talking about speed cranking in the fall, taking a deep crankbait and fishing them fast to catch really nice fish. Today we're up on Dale Hollow Lake. This is a famous fishery. This is where the world record smallmouth came from. It's an awesome lake. It's got big smallmouth, big largemouth, big spotted bass. And it looks like it's going to be a good day. We're not even out of the marina yet. We're already catching fish. So this fishery is famous. We came here today because we want to throw the crankbait with you. Speed cranking is one of the best ways that you can catch a bass during the fall transition into fall and all the way through the winter back around to spring. We started talking about this a year ago when we designed the tactical crankbait. We designed it to fill this exact niche, this pattern that will help carry us through winter time. So today we're back on the water to show you guys how to do it. I've got two in them. I'm good. I'm okay. good. This fish had one hook point, but he thrashed and caught both hooks. So for those of you that aren't familiar, this is the crankbait Tim and I designed. This is the Tactical DD75. Nice fish. It's got a very, very tight action and a very specific rattle to it, a very specific vibration. Much tighter than what we would call a summertime crankbait. Most crankbaits have this big wide wobble. That is not what you want as the water temps start to drop. You want a very tight actioned bait. Burning that crank. Burn, 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 burn. Pause. Load up. So much fun. There's one. Allograph? Yeah. Jump. Nice large mouth? Yeah. I'm just dragging this fish. Once he slows down, he's going to go crazy. <laughs> oh, he almost came off. One hook on the outside is all he's got left. That color's catching him today. It is. They really like it. Don't you do it. Stay on. <laughs> awesome. That is just too much fun. You know, when people think crankbaits, a lot of guys throw a slower, you know, five to one reel, just steady cranking, big wide wobbling crankbaits. And that is not what we are talking about today. What we're talking about today is something completely different. Seven to one or eight to one reels, really soft rods, really tight action baits. It's a completely different animal. Here in a minute, we'll sit down 
and really explain what this is about and how to do it. Nice job. Oh, that was a big small mouth. I had just set my rod down. Lame. Brutal. Nice fish, man. Just made a change. That was actually my second pass with this color. Doesn't take too too long to realize that uh, Matt was kicking my butt with that that uh, green pumpkin craw color. So I went with this little Spro rock crawler with green back, and and uh, that was like I said, my second cast coming through that grass and paused and smashed it, but. Smallmouth, man, they're notorious for jumping sky high and came off. All of a sudden, we've got a little bit of weather coming in. So let's get down to the nuts and bolts of this thing. Why speed cranking, how to do it, when to do it, because this is a technique you need to understand. So we have been running through a series of videos lately, right? We've talked lipless, we've talked square bills, we've talked a handful of really key baits for the fall, jerk baits. When we did the jerk bait video, I explained to you that there are only a couple of baits that can draw an actual core reaction from a bass. It's not just whether or not they want to eat, it will actually draw a feed response out of them and it will cause a fish to feed even when they don't want to. Speed cranking is the best way to do that. It is the most consistent way to catch giant fish that are not in a feeding mood. So today we came up to Dale Hollow for a couple of reasons. This is a Highland Reservoir. This is a lake that we have not spent any time on. I came here one time three or four years ago. Tim has never been here. We thought that this would be a great place to demonstrate the technique because we knew we had in a Highland Reservoir this time of year, fairly clean water. But most importantly, we knew that if we came out here and ran this pattern, it should work. And that's what we wanted to do with you. We wanted to demonstrate that you can show up even to a place you know nothing about where the bite may be decent, it may not be, it doesn't matter because you're trying to trigger a feed response. And that's exactly what has taken place today. I mean, we caught, Tim caught one off camera and then I caught one on camera in the marina before we even got out. We know nothing about this place. So speed cranking, let's talk through it. This is a 6XD, okay? Straight King 6XD. And I grabbed this out of the box because this is about as standard of a summertime crankbait as you could get. This bait's gonna have that big wide kick heavy body roll as it's coming through the water. Moves a lot of water, it's loud. It's a fantastic summertime bait. As the water cools though, that starts fading away. That is no longer the action that you're looking for. And that's where these boxes come in. Okay, I've got four baits represented here and there are some others. The specific baits and specific colors that we have the most confidence in, I will break down for you in the video description because I'm about to talk about a bunch of things. I know that can be hard to follow. So in the video description, it'll be laid out very clearly. But essentially, we're gonna talk about the Rock Crawler, Mega Bass's Deep X 300 and Deep Six. And then this is our bait, the Tactical Crankbait. These baits all have different purposes, but speed cranking, is all about getting those fish to react. It's about going as fast as you can go. So seven to one reel, eight to one reel, burn, 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 pause, burn, pause, burn, 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 pause. What you're trying to do is come by a fish with the right vibration, a very tight action, a very aggressive high speed bait. Come by them at such a rate of speed that their response is to chase. Not because they want to, because they have to and they will come hauling after that bait. And then when you pause, they're already coming full throttle and they just open up and eat it. That's how we've caught 
all the fish today. Crank, 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 pause, boom, there they are. So those fish get coming so fast that they can't just slow back down. They just have to eat it. It's just a triggered response inside them. So these different baits, let's start with the rock crawlers. I wanna talk about all these and explain how we use them independently. So the rock crawler, here, this is the exact color. That, ow. That I, um, no it's not, this is. This is the exact one that I got bit on this morning. A little bit of orange on the back. But the rock crawler is an interesting bait because it's actually wider than the others. Okay, it's still a very small, very compact, very high speed bait. But what we use this one for is very specific. You see this shoreline, you see all the rock up there? If you've got an opportunity like this, if you have a lot of grass, if you're out on a flat, you've got grass and you're ticking grass, not your best choice. But if you've got rock where this bait can kick and deflect and bounce, this thing is phenomenal because it tracks really well at high speed. So you can get it going very, very fast. And then when it starts bouncing off things, it kicks way out. It gives huge deflection. And that is key to, again, getting that core response. But with this bait, it will truly shine if you've got something to bounce it off of, okay? Now these other guys, the Deep X 300, the Deep Six, again, excellent baits. Let me pull a couple of these out. You can see the size difference. These are Mega Basses. This is the 300, this is the Deep Six. Bigger body, bigger bill, a little bit different body shapes, but very similar action. Again, they're very tight actioned baits. And I truly think that these baits were a happy mistake. They weren't trying to build a cold water bait. It just happened to work well because these are baits that again, shine as the water cools and then they shine all the way through winter. We are bringing this up and explaining the technique to you right at the start of the bite. You can do this for months. You can do this all the way up until the spawn. The fish will react incredibly well to what we call cold water crankbaits and speed cranking. So these baits, again, very, very tight action, good deflection, they cover water really, really quickly. They've got a great sound and fish eat them. They do a really good job. So we throw those a lot. And then last is our bait. Most of you guys are familiar with these. They came out last year. We've been working on them a long time. Let me pull a couple out. This is the color that I was catching fish on today. but we've got a bunch of different colors, but they're all very muted colors, ghosty colors, colors that don't have a giant presence in the water because we don't want those fish. We're not trying to go out in the warm water and have a huge presence and create a giant ruckus and get a fish to come out and eat it. We're trying to come flying by super fast with the right sound and the right vibration so that the fish comes chasing after it, but they can't see it so clearly that they can turn off. They're trying to catch it, catch it, and then boom, there it is in their face, and they eat it. So you'll notice that all of the colors are really muted, really downplayed, and that is on purpose. That's a major part of this technique. We don't do a ton of the big, bold, bright stuff. Now with smallmouth, sometimes yes, but not with the largemouth. So the technique again, Crank as hard as you can crank. I mean, I'm telling you, whether your water is 65 degrees and cooling or 39 degrees, you cannot turn that handle fast enough that that bass can't catch up to that bait. Okay, this technique works. Just burn that handle, pause. Burn, 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 pause. The length of the pause will change, but the technique is the same. Go really, really fast and stall. And this isn't like a jerk bait. This isn't where you pause and let it sit for a second or two or three. Sometimes it's just a break in cadence. Burn, 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 burn. 
That's it. Other times we'll pause for just a moment. Okay, but it's never like you're giving it a three count or a five count like a jerk bait. This is all about that going fast, going fast. That's the key. So again, I'll break down the specifics on the baits in the video description for you when we throw each style and our favorite colors for doing that. Um, but gear wise, this is a specialized technique. A lot of these baits have smaller hooks and you are fishing for above average fish. These baits catch big ones. We have found in the last few years that this style of fishing gets as big or bigger bites than we get on a swim bait in the winter time. I mean, it truly gets those big, big fish to feed. So you want your gear to be dialed in. We use two different setups and we've talked to you guys about this before, but essentially Sometimes we throw braid to leader. Sometimes we throw straight fluorocarbon. It depends on how the fish are reacting. If you find that that longer pause is getting bit, that sharper start and stop is getting your best bites, because some days you'll be cranking along and you're ready to pause and they eat it before you even stop. They actually eat it on the high speed. So on those days, I find that fluorocarbon actually works really, really well. The benefit of fluoro is that it's very thin. You can use a light line. All of these baits that we've talked about, the heaviest line that we're throwing them on is 12 pound. That's the heaviest. We throw them on 10 quite a bit as well to get extra depth out of them. Depth is key. When we designed our bait, we wanted a medium sized body compared to the other baits that swim this style. It's actually a very small body compared to a typical crankbait, but a medium sized body, but maximum depth and maximum deflection. That was really important because when we're trying to get those big, big bites, the worst thing that can happen is you get snagged up all the time. That was one of the things we didn't like about all the different baits that have come and gone on the market. There's a lot of baits that worked for this technique that nobody understood and they were discontinued. But a lot of them would get snagged up really bad. So we wanted a bait that would deflect really well and get maximum depth. So dropping down in line size down to 10 pound lets us get even deeper, but we still stand a chance. When you hook a giant on 10 pound, if you have the right gear, if that rod will really load up, you stand a chance of keeping those fish pinned and fighting them and getting them to the boat. But if every single bite is coming right when you pause, crank, 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 pause, wham, there they are. Braid to leader. We use a mono leader for shock absorption because if you're using those little tiny hooks on straight braid and you stick a big one, you're bent out. But if you put a mono leader in the mix, that mono gives you that extra little bit of stretch that will help absorb, especially if they eat it close to the boat. But the braid, the benefit here is that when you start and stop with that handle turn, because there's so little stretch with braid, when you stop, it stops. When you go, it goes. So fluoro has a little bit of stretch. So even though you're doing a start and stop, it's burning and then it'll kind of slow down and stop. Take off again, slow down, stop. Braid, go, 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 stop, go, stop. It's a very aggressive motion. So if they're reacting to that, absolutely go braid to leader. Both are some, well, obviously, both are present on the boat today. When we came out here, we each brought a couple of rods. We each brought fluoro and we each brought braid to leader because we've played this game enough. We know that it can go either direction on any given day. But guys, this is an incredible technique. This is just the first video this fall. You guys need to start doing this no matter where you are in the country. We've done it for giant largemouth. We've done it for giant smallmouth, giant spotted bass. All over the country, it works. You can do this. You'll see us doing it a lot more in the coming months. But I'm really glad that we got out here especially to Dale Hollow. This is such a famous place. If you guys don't know, this is the home of the smallmouth world record. A high 11 pound smallmouth came out of here once.
It's incredible. Such a big fish. So this is an incredibly famous lake with an, so much bass fishing history. You know, the float and fly came out of this area. The silver buddy, the blade baits came out of here. It's amazing. So it was a pleasure just to come to this lake. It was a pleasure to show up on a lake, drop in, have no clue what's going on, start speed cranking and immediately start catching fish. That is incredibly rewarding. You can do the same thing. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Turn that camera around. We just got waked out <laughs> so, so bad. Wow. <laughs>